since 1955, based on my experiences and reading, I've come to believe that from herbs, vitamins, minerals, and diet, there is the power to make millions of people happier and healthier with their use at less cost than many pharmaceutical products and often with fewer side effects. With that in mind, I have created and funded the Richard N. Krupp Endowed Fund to support research in this field and prove their merits. I have written this letter in simple layman's language so that my goals, intent, and purpose will be clear to everyone now and long after I've left this world. Well, I'd known Dick uh, when my mom started working for him as a bookkeeper uh, back in the early 80s. I was probably about eight years old. And he just slowly became kind of a, uh, a part of our lives uh, over, the, over the years. He was a very soft, quiet, unassuming man. Uh, he didn't have any children of his own, and it meant a huge amount to him to be able to have something that would live on after him that would really be a statement of what he wanted to give to the world. I know that he had developed a, a rapport with a few of the doctors over at UCSD, namely Gordon Sachs and Lorraine McElhorn. He very much admired the, the CIM. He felt that that was a really good platform for him to get his ideas out to the public. Not just his ideas, but ideas that were a shared vision. We wanted projects that were going to be things that could help ordinary average people to be able to achieve optimal health and wellness. We wanted to choose uh, common, important health problems where if we could find and demonstrate an effect of diet, of natural therapeutics like herbs and vitamins on them, we could have a huge impact. Part of the treatment for patients with multiple myeloma is this autologous stem cell transplant. It's an opportunity to give patients one strong dose of a chemotherapy. This is an intensive procedure and um, like with traditional chemotherapy can have quite a bit in the way of side effects. The chemotherapy inflames the gut lining and as a result gaps can form through which bacteria that should stay in the gut can get into the circulation. Because of the immunocompromising effects of the chemotherapy, there's no immune system to fight off those infections, and patients become septic sometimes. So the concept behind it is that kanji, kanji is um, a kind of a traditional food, kind of like a porridge, we'll say. And something that is so simple is to take this healing food made from ordinary whole grains and be able to soft cook it with lots of extra water, the way they did in ancient China, the way that Hippocrates did in Greece 2,400 years ago. The thought behind it is that these grains can provide literally a barrier to the actual wall of the intestine itself so that bacteria are contained where they're supposed to be and kind of help coat and soothe the parts of the GI tract that have been so inflamed and disrupted, which are causing many of those symptoms. And so why don't we see if having some of those patients ingesting kanji could make a difference, both on the um, incidence of which patients are having these infections, but also to see if we can make a really significant um, intervention, such as a transplant, a little bit more tolerable. One very hot and intriguing field of uh, research inquiry that's um, become in some ways quite the rage is uh, the microbiome, the aggregate collection of microbes that reside on every surface of the body that comes in contact with the outside world. And when it comes to food, that means the GI tract, especially the large intestine. Rob Knight is working with us along with Dr. Sanjay Agarwal in a three-way project that brings together patients with endometriosis and 
assessment of the gut microbiome and changes in it, as well as other microbiomes in the body, the endometrial microbiome, for example, and changes in diet. Endometriosis is a condition that affects 5 to 10% of reproductively aged women, so it's a very common problem. It's an inflammatory disease where the lining of the uterus, the tissue that a woman would shed during a period, is found outside the uterus. We think that in most cases, endometriosis is caused by tissue not going out of the reproductive tract, but going backwards out of the tubes and dropping in the pelvis, perhaps on the bowel, the bladder, the ovaries. One of the challenges in the world of endometriosis is that there's a huge delay between the onset of symptoms to diagnosis. It can be nine to 12 years of pain before a woman is actually diagnosed with endometriosis. That's a huge time. And I know that men, for example, would not tolerate such a long time without a diagnosis, but yet women do. We're looking at a special diet for our women with endometriosis, a plant-based, whole food-based diet, one that's rich in omega-3s, to see if we can improve the quality of their lives, decrease inflammation as detected in their blood, and also change the inflammatory nature of their gut microbiome. So I think this is hugely cool, very important, and is something that could, if it works, be applied globally without healthcare, just with education. A number of years ago, I became interested in non-conventional therapies for eye disease, and in particular for glaucoma. Uh, we thought an integrated approach uh, which would include conventional therapies as well as some of these alternative therapies might be more effective. And we put that together and called the strategy integrative ophthalmology. For example, uh, new research uh, shows that patients who do better with glaucoma tend to have a diet that's high in green leafy vegetables. And uh, one of my colleagues uh, believes that that's related to something that's found in this called nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is known to be a substance that dilates blood vessels. And we think that that might be beneficial because it might enhance the perfusion of their optic nerve and surrounding retina. So the research that's being done through the Krupp donation places UCSD right at the cutting edge of treatment, not only for glaucoma and age-related macular degeneration, but I would imagine for so many other diseases where we would expect that lifestyle, nutrition, diet, vitamins, supplements, all are going to have salutary effects. Western medicine doesn't have all the answers to many health problems. While it can do remarkable things, it has its shortcomings. And these treatments all address root causes. We as scientists believe in data and we believe in, in modern medicine and chemotherapy. And maybe in the past have been a little closed-minded about the opportunities that are out there that could complement what we do. But I think there's really a role to integrate kind of real modern medicine with um, kind of the more integrative medicine aspect of it all. These very same changes in diet and lifestyle can have a hugely beneficial effect on the health of our entire society, and believe it or not, on the health of our planet. It's health through food. It's health through uh, nutrition. This is the time to, to, to get involved. We have one of the largest funds of its kind probably the largest fund of its kind. We have big goals for where we want to take this. We have long-term potential growth. And I think uh, we all know the coming medical revolution and uh, we've all been fighting for it. And um, you know, now's time to get on board and make it happen.